And you know how to sew. I wish somebody would give me a mask and, and print on there behind this mask is somebody who knows the goodness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Behind this mask is somebody who knows the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, God. So behind this mask is another praise waiting to happen. Thank you, God. Behind this mask is a glory. Behind this mask is a hallelujah. Behind this mask is somebody that's been delivered. Behind this mask is somebody who's been set free. Behind this mask is somebody who knows Jesus. tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. And let me just read these opening verses. Find a man broken and pitiful, laid out before God, seeking his mercy. And history will point to the disastrous sin committed by King David when he took Bathsheba, the wife of another man, Uriah, and lay with her in adultery. Bathsheba later informs David that she is pregnant, at which point they contrive a plan to have her husband be intimate with her sexually to cover her sin against him. And King David orders Uriah home to obviously be with his wife, but his loyalty to the king and his fellow soldiers would not allow him to enjoy the pleasure of his wife. And so now with the failed plan in hand, a baby on the way and a nation at war, King David sends Uriah back to the battle in an area where his military experience was not up to that level in order for him to survive. And so I have a question for the kingdom of God. I wonder if we consider in the church the era of putting ill-equipped, unqualified, and just overall not right for the job people in a position knowing that they will fail as a sin. All right. Yes, Lord. Oh, thank you, God. That, that was a mouthful. So, uh, but sometimes we put people in a position to fail, yeah. huh? And, and listen, David put Uriah in a position to fail. He knew that he was not an experienced enough soldier to deal with that area of the battle. Thank but he God. tells the captain, put him where the battle is the hottest, because he knew that in that particular area, with his inexperience, he was doomed to death. And so his plan there, in fact, was successful, but yet it was sinful. Uh oh, this, oh Amen. my God. Now that one just came out. It was successful, but it was sinful. And some of y'all have been in some situations where your plan was successful, but it was also sinful. Mm -hmm. You had no business in that situation. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judge. And so here David's opinion leads him to believe that his sin was against God only, but far from reality. There are many who believe when they commit sin that God is the only one they need to repent to. How wrong you are, my brothers and sisters. God would have us understand that personal sins have public consequences and complications and far-reaching effects. And where did this evil originate? David would tell us in verse 5, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. This statement is not to suggest that David was the result of a sinful relationship, but the reference to the impact that the original sin committed by Adam and Eve has had on all humankind. The eighth son of Jesse and Mrs. Jesse is a sinner. The sixth son of Samuel and Benny was a son. Mm -hmm. uh oh Matter of fact, the fifth child and the fourth child and the third child and the second child and the first child of Samuel and Benny were sinners. Amen. And we had to repent and get our lives 
got straight with God. Amen. Nobody came in this world without the potential and the eventuality of sin. Oh, somebody ought to talk to me today. Somebody ought to talk to me today. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you're sitting here and you've never committed any sin, then I would say you must still be in the womb. But the rest of us, we have committed some kind of sin. Either we thought it, we said it, or we performed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And there's some folk that haven't done a whole lot with their bodies, but they have done a whole lot with their mind and with their mouths. Uh, going about wrecking other folks' relationship. God said, I hate folk who so see the discord amongst brethren. Amen. Uh -huh. Listen, listen, you, that's some stuff that you just got to stay out of. Yeah. Uh -huh. but some, some stuff just ain't none of your business. But you know, I, I, I just feel they need to know. Listen, there's some stuff folk don't need to know. They can just move on and live the rest of their life not ever having known those things. Amen. I'm here to tell you. Bishop, you, you, you teaching people to hide. No, I'm teaching people to mind their business. Because if it ain't your business, listen, if you really got something to say, why don't you say it to the person who's guilty and then leave it up to them whether they tell or not? Because here's the truth of the matter. When you find yourself in a situation where you're breaking up marriages and breaking up sisterhood and breaking up brotherhood and breaking up mother-father relationship and you don't have the ability to put them back together again, you need to mind your business. Amen. I'm not going to help the three people here today. Uh, believe it or not, some of the stuff that you think you have information on, and, and you think you're the CIA, the FBI, and the, and the police, you think you got so special information. Believe it or not, when you get to folk to tell them, a lot of times they already know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's not that they're living in denial, but they're trying to work out their forgiveness issues. They're trying to get to the point where they can say, I forgive that person. I forgive my husband. I forgive my wife. I forgive my brother. I forgive my sister. And see, then when you come in with your information, you just add fuel to a fire that was about to die out. And now it will inflamed all over again. All you got to do is mind your business and learn how to pray. Learn how to see God's face. And then pray for that person that's going through and say, Lord, take him through. Take him through. Take me through. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave it alone. Thank you, God. Uh, so I'm here to tell you, we come in the world headed for sin. Mm -hmm. Straightforward. Our spirit is wrapped in human and sinful flesh, and only Jesus was able to conquer sin in the flesh. But without him in our lives, we will continue to fall in disgrace. Verse 6 says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the inward part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. The need for truth goes so far beyond personal one-on-one -on -one relationships. God not only desires it, but he requires it. And we must be truthful with ourselves before we can be so with others. We must acknowledge our wrongdoing as well as our part when we cause others to stray. Uh, always be aware of those you have power with. Uh, the words you give in advising them cause them to prosper as well as suffer. And we cannot make claims that individuals are grown uh, when we know that our influence in their lives can lead them down the wrong path. Uh, our experience and our suggestions uh, have great impact in the lives of those who love and respect us. What are you talking about, Bishop? That's some folk who really want your advice. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. And when they follow your advice and it don't work out, you can't go around telling people, you know, they grown, they can make up their own mind. Listen, you gotta remember, you help them make that decision. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And then you need to take responsibility when you give people advice and it don't turn out the right way. And say, I'm sorry, I gave you some bad advice. Don't be so prideful and boastful to think that everything that comes out of your mouth is dipped in gold and sprinkled with diamonds. Listen, we all as we in this human flesh, we're going to mess up. We're going to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Listen, you ought to just leave. You ought to just leave. Sometimes leaving is not the best option. Listen, sometimes folk never learn anything if they keep hopping from one place to another. You got to sit still and learn the lessons that God has designed for you. Yes. Freshman year algebra was very hard, but dropping out was not an option. I had to stay there even in the midst of failure because God taught me through failure how to pray and seek him to pass. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You need to tell somebody sometime. Listen, dropping out is not always an option. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody need it. Dropping out is not always an option. I'm not here to hurt your feelings, but listen, distancing yourself is not always an option. Amen. Sometimes you just got to stick it out and stick it through. And 
And so we're almost done here. Uh, uh, say this with me. Can't do it on my own. Can't do it on my own. Verse 7 says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. This purging requires the power of the Holy Ghost. The hyssop plant is used to cleanse the digestive system. It helps to move out contaminants. And we need the spirit to clean out things that are in our lives uh, that hinder us from moving forward in God. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. This prayer is needed even more today with all that we hear and take in. Every turn in life these days bears a lie. Lies about the pandemic, lies about our health, bad news in the economy, catastrophic weather reports, racism at an all-time high, crime rates continue to rise, along with unemployment. And is there any good news? Yes, there is, and it's in the word of God. This kind of prayer requires a touch from God. We have to be made to hear joy and gladness. Some of us are so used to bad news, we can't hardly celebrate. We don't even know what good news is. We pick up the phone looking for bad news. When we see certain people's number come up on the phone, we just, oh, Lord, what is it now? Amen. Oh, I know I'm here. I know. Listen, listen, during this pandemic, I've got so many calls, text messages, Facebook posts on my wife's page about folk who died. Look like every time the phone rang, I was expecting somebody to be dead. It got to a point where it looked like three, four, five in a week, people that I know. And it was starting to really get on my nerves. And one brother just put out there on Facebook, he said, listen, I'm trying to get through my own situation. His brother had passed away. He said, listen, don't send me no more death notices. I can't deal with it right now. Let me tell you something. He's a pastor and a prophet. And God knows he's a pastor and a prophet. But listen, even we get tired. I don't care how knowledge you are. You get tired of hearing bad news. Amen. And you want to hear some good news. I'm here to tell you. You got to learn how to weed through and sift through all the stuff that's going on. And find joy and gladness. And so as I get ready to close, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says, Then finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And so the only remedy we have is God create in me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. And then I'll teach others how to live right. And All he's right. done with that. Thank you, God. My God. Give me a new heart. Thank you. Amen. We've allowed anger, hurt feelings, frustrations, broken promises, mm -hmm. all those things to oh, tear our hearts apart. Yes, Lord. Can I talk to some married folk today? Mm -hmm. Or some not so married folk? <laughs> or some used to be married folk? I know it was two of y'all when you got married, but sometimes only one of y'all was serious. Amen. The other one wanted some legal sex. Oh. You say that. They were tired of feeling guilty about committing fornication, so they figured they'd get married. And uh, so they said, I do, and you said, I do. You was really serious. You was getting, you were excited. You had your gown, your touch, your flowers and everything. Your girls is with you. You guys is with you. And you felt good. You had good food, the reception and everything. And you, you went home to the holy matrimony, and then you, you, know, you did what you did. And then a few years later, boom. But the truth of the matter is, those broken promises hurt. Amen. Because that person promised and you promise. Yes, Will you Lord. promise to keep X, Y, Z to yourself and you and you alone? My God. And they said, I do. Mm. And then when everybody in the audience didn't hear it, they said, no, you didn't say that louder. And so they held the microphone to you and said, I do. I, Robert, I, Richard, I, Tremel, promise to keep Elaine. Sherry, Joanne, to myself, to be my lovely wedding wife, to be my lovely wedding husband. After you got through saying all that, a few years later, trials come. And 
broken promises. But I know a God. Thank you, God. And all your broken promises. Yes, Lord. Now, that's just one example of where people make promises. But the truth of the matter, you know, sometimes we don't think about promises to the mortgage company. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay. Sometimes we don't think about promises to the light company. That if you turn these lights on in my house, I promise to pay you. <laughs> we don't think about the promises. Mm. I, if you put gas in my house, I, I promise to pay you when the bill comes. That's right. And, and sometimes we don't think about those broken promises that we've made and break. Okay. But God looks at all those the same. Mm, thank you, God. When you put your word out, you want to keep it. Yes. Amen. Because he put his word out. He said, I will leave you and forsake you. Never leave oh, you. Oh, oh, ne oh never. Never, never. Nor forsake you. And sometimes we say, God, where you at? He probably said, where you at? Mm -hmm. I ain't been nowhere. You don't want to left. Matter of fact, I remember he was talking to um, Israel, I believe it was, was it 50? Isaiah 50. He said, why? He said, uh, talk to your mom. Ask her why she walking around and why she divorced and she ain't divorced. Come on. This is in the Bible, y'all. Okay, I'm serious. It's in the Bible. You didn't read that. It's in the Bible. He said, well, why they act like they divorced and they not divorced? You know, because some of us, we haven't even filed a divorce and we dating already. Somebody no, else. that's right. Yes. Broken promises. Jesus. David stepped outside his marriage mm. as, because <laughs> he had more than one wife then. God allowed that to be. But he stepped outside more egregiously than ever because he was stepping into another man's marriage. And he now realizes his problem. Mm -hmm. And we have to appreciate his humility. He's not saying, God, deliver me from the consequences. But if you created me a clean heart, I'll be able to deal with those consequences. Because God had already let them know the sword is coming to your house and it won't leave. Because you caused a situation that could have had what they call epic proportions. Yes. This thing could have gone national. Everybody in the nation could have found out what you did. But I covered you even in that. Thank you, God. Jesus. It's like all you young ladies. Y'all behave yourself. Talking to y'all on Facebook Live and talking to some of y'all here. You don't be laying up having four in the case. You don't Lord, please don't let me get pregnant. I won't do it no more, Lord. I won't do it no more. You never know. Amen. You just never know. Amen. You just never know. He really didn't think that what he was doing was wrong. He had it in his mind, I'm the king and I can do what I want to do. And we're not going to let Bathsheba up the hook. I'm not going to jump on her like I have in the past. But she was just as guilty. Amen. She knew what she was doing. So don't, don't you ever think that she didn't know what she was doing. Amen. She knew what she was doing. And, and, and you know, sometimes wrong for we try to act with, I didn't know. I didn't understand. You know. You know your body. We all in here know our body. And we know when somebody's too close. Amen. And we know what we feel when people get too close. Amen. Amen. If you felt it when he walked in the door, you know you're going to feel it if he shakes your hand. My God. So that's a brother you need to wave at across the church. I know that's right. Amen. How you doing, Brother Johnson? Oh, hold on, sister. Come on. I, I want to speak to you. I got to go. <laughs> Lord, Ray. Help us, God. I, I got to go. Help you already us. know how he make you feel. Y'all don't play when we're there. See, y'all trying to get all saved and sink about the Holy Ghost feel like y'all like like sitting next to Jesus when I start talking about this kind of stuff. But we all know our bodies and our minds and what makes us feel what. Say that! And so Say that. the Bible talks about not giving occasion to the flesh. There are just certain cars and certain back seats you don't need to be in. You don't need to let folk hook you up with. Girl, he's fine. He was looking at me. Well, I... Uh, uh, that's what the girl in the song of Solomon said. Don't be trying to stir something up that ain't there. 
That girl was tight. She was bad. She, she don't stir up nothing that ain't that. I don't want him. I want my soon-to-be husband from back home. Because a lot of folk got that story mixed up. I see y'all. They thought Solomon was the one that she was in love with. She wasn't in love with Solomon. She was in love with her fiance, who lived in the village she lived in. Solomon had kidnapped her. He thought because he was the king and had it going on, she ought to just come and be with him. But her convictions were simply this. I'm going to hold out and wait for who I love. And then the reason you know it wasn't Solomon, because the one that she loved, when he found out where she was, he came to see her. And he was looking through the window. And, hey! He said, he said, he got a whole bunch of women. He said, but I only got one. And that's, that's the kind of man you need, sisters. That's the kind of woman you need, brothers. Where I don't care how many other folk are in the world, they think of only you. Amen. Say it again, bitch. God is so awesome that when he's working with you, he's just working with you. Amen. And he can be working with all of us at the same time and make us feel like it's all about us at that moment. Now, only God can really do that. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm telling you. Listen. And, and, and just, if you really want to try it again, for those of you who have been through these situations and been through these maladies and these issues of life, amen, don't give up on marriage. Don't give up on relationship. Amen. amen. Don't let the devil tell you too ugly and don't nobody want you. Amen. Listen, I still believe there's somebody out there for everybody. Yes, it is. You just got to hold on. That's right. Just hold on. Amen. Amen. If you don't have a whole lot of head, get a wig. Amen. Do, some, do something. You know? you know, find other earring. You know, don't come out with just one, but get the other one too. Uh, Glory to God. Get your nails done. Hallelujah. Fix your pants, brother. Yes, Lord. Put on matching socks. Make sure you got on the same black shoe from the same pair. You know, come out looking good. Brush your teeth and put some breath mints in your mouth. Amen. Amen. Even if you only got two teeth in your mouth, brush both of them. <laughs> Don't come out looking like woulda, shoulda, coulda, and then expect somebody to look like, if he see me at my worst, then I know that's him. No, 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 it don't work like that. God came with his best. Amen. When God sent Jesus, he sent his best. He didn't send us no half thing. He sent the best. Amen. Well, then he, listen, because our breath don't stink after we get married. Well, then wait and let it stink then. Don't have it stink at me from. If you walk in a room and she know you there five minutes before you see her, then you something's wrong. Listen, you need to take care of that. Oh, God. Uh-huh. Sometimes we want people to just accept us any old kind of way. No, you all not want to be an any old kind of way person. Bring your A game. I'm not talking to anybody. Bring your A game. So that's what part of that, that's what the, that clean heart will bring you. A clean heart don't just want to come any kind of way. You know, we got Zoom now, y'all. I'm just about done. We got Zoom, right? Sometimes we be at home. Looking like something that zoomed through our life. <laughs> that just might be the night for you to stop your video. <laughs> Say that. Stop that video. Unmute yourself, but stop that video. You never know who might be on Zoom. Amen. And they might zoom right on past you. So stop your video. Amen. And then when you come out, bring your A game. Amen. And we will help you fix yourself up. If your tag is in the wrong place, we will help you fix your weed. Yes, we will. This is the kind of church we have here. Amen. We're not going to have y'all looking bad, looking rough. Amen. Amen. We'll, listen, we'll help you adjust your necktie, whatever you got. Come, hey, come here. Let me show you. Hey, come here. Come here. Come here. Show you out. Because you never know when your opportunity may be. The Bible says the race is not given to the swift, neither the battle to the strong, neither the bread to the wise. But then at the end of that verse, please just see 9 11. It says, time and chance happen to the all. It just might be your day. Right. Your Prince Charming might walk in. And you don't want him to see Melissa Harmon. <laughs> Joyce Harmon. Elaine Harmon. You want him to see you right. Amen. Amen. Created me a clean 
same heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit. I, I'm saying some of this because I'm talking about that particular passage. Because I've never seen people when they're homeless and broken, they stop caring yes. about hygiene. They stop caring about how they look yes. because they're broken. Yes. And then the outward no longer matters to them. And I'm here to tell you that when God restores your mind and your spirit, you begin to care again. It's important that you care. I wish you just pointed two people and tell them it's important, it's important that, you that you care. It's important that you care. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Thank you, God. And a right spirit. In yes, me. Lord. I got to care. I don't care. And, and you know, I, my brother's back there. Bless you, man. Look, I, I'm at a point now, even with my wife, you know, when we were going out, you know, with the pandemic, we haven't been able to go out as much. I still want to look appetizing for her. That's right. Y'all been married 32 years. She didn't see it. Nah, I still, I still want to look good for that moment. Amen. And it don't bother me when other men look at her. Because I know in the back of their mind, they got to be saying, man, that's a bad man. I had that sister. <laughs> Ain't no need to be wondering, what you looking at? What you looking at? What you looking at? I was looking at it. That brother just got good taste. Amen. He recognizes what? Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. Jealousy don't belong in no marriage. She don't look at my man for so. He look if he look good, you look at him. All right. Amen. Most of us in here, if you got any reasonable thinking mind, you all not want what don't nobody else want. Just know that if you bring your A game, you can walk away with the prize. All right. All right. Don't take it for granted that she just going to leave with you. Uh-huh. That's why I told I, I, I hooked up, so I was telling y'all about it the other night. Some of y'all, I was up in Michigan. I still thought we was in Battle Creek. Maybe we were. I think we was in Battle Creek, though. I think, I think, think it was, was Battle Creek. Creek. Yeah. And so uh, I was running a little late that morning. I hadn't got myself quite together. And so... I said, well, go downstairs, baby, check out that restaurant in the lobby and see if it's good. So she went down there and got her table, right? So I walked in, and the young lady comes to me and said, you know, are you here for lunch? I said, yes. And so she took me to another table. I didn't tell her that that was my wife. So when she came back to get my order, I said, would you do me a favor, ma'am? And she said, what's that? I said, would you ask that woman over there if she wouldn't mind having my company for lunch today? <laughs> And so she went over and asked my wife, she said, there's a man over at the other table. He wants to know if you wouldn't mind having this company today. <laughs> See, you got to know how to spice your thing up. Amen. Amen. We put spice on our food. Yeah. We put spices on our neck. That's cologne, perfect. Right. Put some spice in your relationship, Amen. your marriage. Amen. So she was sitting over there and she said, yeah, tell him to come on over. Now they probably thought, what is kind of woman is this? Don't just let some man come on. It's a woman who had been married to this man for 20-something years at that time. And so she, the girl started laughing. She said, oh, y'all are married to him. She said, oh, that's so cute. Yeah, it is. I hope you find somebody that'll do stuff like that for you. Amen. You got her phone number. Amen. Amen. You got her phone number. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Don't lose those charms. Amen. That same Mac Daddy you was when y'all was. <laughs> Be that Mac Daddy after you get married. One pastor said, love making don't start when you get in the bed at night. It starts in the morning when you leave in the bed. Little subtle texts and phone calls throughout the day. Girl, what you doing? Where you at? You outside? What you got on? I'll be home at 4 o'clock. I'm telling y'all, don't give up on that. If, if something went wrong in your situation and you ended up on the other side of the M and you ended up with the D, <sighs> say, Lord, give me another chance. And then make sure that you are the best. Because you can't be a husband for yourself. He has to be that. You can't be a wife for yourself. That person has to be. So be the best husband or be the best wife that you can be. And if they can't appreciate it, then they don't deserve it. 
But don't you ever feel less than who you are because somebody couldn't appreciate all that you are. Amen. I think all the bills and the of somebody. I think it's got to be some folks over here.
that the caterpillar, the palm worm, the locust, and the canker worm ate up. He said, I'll restore him. So you want your 2019 back. I'm going to go over here to the side. Because see, the enemy took 1999 from me. I had money coming out of 98 into 99. But the layoff happened in 98. And so 99, I ended up losing my 401k. I couldn't find another job. I, I lost that money. I lost all the paychecks from the severance. I had to spend that money trying to save my life and save my economy. And then we ended up losing the house that I spent the 401k on. We still lost the house. After I spent the 401k saving the house, still lost the house. But it all happened because of 1998 and 1999. Then 2011, I got sick. 2005, she got sick. So I got about four or five years that I want back. That was years that the enemy ate up. Yes. Amen. So I want it back. Yes. That's about fifty thousand dollars in one of those years, and another fifty in the other year. Because that's about what I was making on the job. And so, so ninety-eight, that that fifty was gone. Ninety-nine, the other fifty was gone. And then, then in two thousand one or two thousand rather is when I started spending four hundred one k. That's another fifty thousand. So that's about one hundred fifty thousand dollars that the devil took. I bought it back. Yeah. 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 Uh, Y'all ain't got to want it for me. I want it back. And he said, I will. Restore the years. So I'm gonna give you 15 seconds. I want you to think of a year that you want back more years. And when I count back from three, I want you to jump up. If you can, if you can't jump up, don't jump up. But if you can jump up, I want you to jump up and scream out those years that you want back. Three. Sit back. Come on, what you want that? 
you remember when my wife had that brain hemp? We want that. The money that Social Security holding up on us, we want it. Get, get it back over here. Because you know, folks can come over and borrow your stuff and act like it's theirs. Uh -uh. It ain't yours. I want it back. Bless you. Come on, Tyler. I'm going to leave y'all alone today. I'm going to leave y'all I want it back. Get it back over here. That was, my mama had a good way of saying that. Get it back over here. And don't put it where I can't reach it either. I don't feel like getting up. You're going to sit down at the other end of the table. I got to I, I, I put it back down here where you got it from. Put it back where you got it from. Uh -huh. So if I wake up one morning and I got $150,000 in my bank account, I'm not going to be calling the bank so much I made a mistake. I ain't made no mistake. That's just about putting my stuff back. Those of you have an offer, come on, get in line. I want it back. Boom, dun, dun, dun.
this house, for this ministry. We bless you in Jesus' name. Keep us, O oh God, in the sin of your will, that we may be found worthy to be blessed. Every amount of support and whatever matter, bless the giver. Minister, see for them to suffer. And we bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. We thank you for restoring the years. According to your word, we thank you for restoring the years. 